For those of you who are fans of Hua Hin or live in Hua Hin or want a vacation here or thought about retiring in Hua Hin, I thought this was a great article and I just wanted to kind of call it out and do a quick video on it just to remind people just how great Hua Hin really is. And it uh, you know makes me very happy to see this. I came here around 2002 and I loved it so much. I spent uh, three or four weeks here. I loved it so much that I started to buy condos at that uh, time. And uh, I've now have four condos in Hua Hin. So love seeing uh, Forbes put an article about uh, it being one of the three great places across the world to live in your 60s, as you can see here in this article. I think it was about seven years ago, eight years ago, that Money Magazine also listed Hua Hin as number seven in the world for retirement. And I've always said that Hua Hin is a great place for 55 and above, and especially for those who just want a quieter lifestyle, that you're not coming to Thailand to party, to do extreme sports out in the ocean. You know, you can certainly do some of that in Hua Hin, but uh, nothing like you can do in other parts of Thailand. It's really more of, if you want a real life, if you want to relax, you want access to the ocean, the beach, play golf, watch movies, go to the grocery store, have a normal life and not have some of that nightlife that a couple of the other retirement cities in Thailand have. And just to quickly go through this article here, so just so you can see the other choices. Uh, the first one, well, a nice thing about this is that the, uh, the lead photo that they use for this article is actually the beach at Hua Hin. And I'm not sure which resort that is, but it looks nice. And the first one they listed is from Panama. And if somebody gave me 25 guesses uh, on great places to retire, I would have never named Panama. I didn't know. Uh, but apparently, according to this article, it has the largest expat retirement community in the world. So apparently, it's popular with a lot of people, and I just didn't know it. So it must be a wonderful place. The, uh, the next uh, one that made the list was see here oh i must have passed over it. malaga spain no idea if i'm pronouncing that correctly uh but i know some friends who bought retirement homes in spain and uh they they did the same thing they visited uh spain loved it thought they'd buy a house you know 10 20 years ahead of time and some of those people have already, probably already moved to spain i've been to spain a few times and it is definitely a wonderful city uh, I've only been to Barcelona, though. Uh, and then number three is Hua Hin, Thailand. And what she says about this is mentions the royal family, year-round temperatures in the mid-80s, refreshing sea breezes. And the first time I read this, I know that it calls out the art scene, galleries, expositions, uh, festivals, religious celebrations and golf courses. So if you're a golfer, Hua Hin Thailand is a no brainer. And it's got the number one and number two ranked golf course in Thailand. And that would be Black Mountain and Banyan. And it also has the first golf course ever built in uh, Thailand. I believe it was somewhere around the 1920s or a little bit before that. And that's the Royal Hua Hin Golf Club. And then it also has the most dense number of golf courses. So I can get in my car and within 30 kilometers, I can play probably 10 different golf courses, uh, possibly more at this point. And six or seven of them are going to be uh, near country club style. And of course, one or two of them, well, actually three or four of them are going to be definitely country club style. And then the one or two are going to be uh, pro quality level and especially the Black Mountain uh, golf course, which does have typically one pro tournament every year and it's sometimes the uh, Asian tour qualifier location as well and I've actually played with two different uh, European pros who have used Hua Hin golf courses as uh, for their off season when it's uh, snowing and raining over there and uh, so that was certainly kind of fun and uh, you know what also she talks about the rentals here that you know great value that there's a lot of property to uh, you know buy condos and homes or rent and uh, she calls out here that a three-bedroom villa with a pool rents for around 1200 a month. I think that's pretty accurate. And a central one-bedroom Seaview condo rents for 690 
And I think that's very accurate as well. That would be a condo that's got security and a pool and a nice view and, uh, and that it would cost 150,000. So that's, that's accurate as well. And so I've got three condos I run out in Hua Hin and they range anywhere from, uh, the cheapest one is 16,000 baht up to around 50,000 baht. And it really depends on just location. How close do you want to be to the ocean and how many bedrooms and, and bathrooms do you need? Uh, certainly, it's a great place to to live. And I've always said it's great for 55 and above. You know, just a little history on Hua Hin. So I'm sure that there's going to be some people that uh, may listen to this video and say, like, why are you why are you mispronouncing Hua Hin? And so I just want to make sure that people understand and learn the right way to say Hua Hin. So Hua Hin originally around the 1900s was known as Thai words for row of rocks. And uh, there's happened to be a couple year long drought. Some farmers migrated south. They ran into the white sandy beaches of what's now known as Hua Hin. They looked out at the uh, the beach and the ocean and saw the, the rock formation that was originally the name Row of Rocks, and they thought the rocks looked like heads. So it became headstones, headstone. So Hua Hin stands for headstone. Hua is head in Thai, Hin is stone in Thai. And to give you an example of how to use this is if you went to a doctor, the name, the, the, the word for uh, pain or ache is Pud, P-W-D, Pud. So if you wanted to tell the doctor that you had a headache, you would say pud hua, meaning in Thai, you would read that as headache. Now, if you went to a doctor and you said pud wa, the doctor would probably look confused. He might think that you're using slang for to have him check your genitals because there is no word for wa. So wa doesn't stand for anything in Thai. And the reason that it gets mixed up is because hua, H-U-A, in Mandarin is pronounced wa. There is uh, a very large electronics company, telecom company in Thailand called Hua, excuse me, called Huawei. And the first word is spelled H-U-A. And the reason it's pronounced that way is because Huawei is one of the largest, if not the largest telecom company in China. So Hua, H-U-A in Mandarin is Wa, H-U-A in Thai is Hua, and it stands for head as in headstone. So uh, very proud that uh, Forbes named Hua Hin as one of the top three, and it certainly is number one on my list, and I've been all over the world. I still travel internationally. I've been in six different countries this year, and I'll probably hit one or two more before it's over. And, but I just love it. I'm most happy in Hua Hin. And you can always reach me at my email, which is huahinretirement at gmail.com. And I'll, I list it in the description for this as well. But uh, love hosting anyone who wants to come here and experience the one of the top three retirement places in all of the entire world. Thanks for listening.